So welcome everyone. My name is Mariana Stoyancheva and I am the Assistant Dean for Strategic and Executive Affairs uh, at BU Willock. It is my pleasure to welcome you tonight and to um, thanking you for spending Friday night with all of us here at BU Willock. We are thrilled that you are considering our college as um, uh, you are thinking about your graduate studies. We hope that you find tonight's session informative and helpful. We will do our best to answer all your questions about your graduate studies, about BU Willock. Um, you can submit your questions in the Q&A uh, function uh, section of, uh, at the bottom of uh, your screen. We will be monitoring the Q&A uh, tonight and we will try to address all of your questions as they come along. If we miss a question, please, um, or if we run out of time, um, please do reach out to our team after tonight and we will be happy to schedule a session with you and uh, speak with you directly. Of course, you can also bring many of your questions uh, to the individual program sessions that will follow after this general information session. For those of you who wish to view uh, closed captioning, please toggle the C, the closed captioning button that is uh, on the bottom of your screen. Just before we begin, I also want to tell you that we will be recording the session tonight and sharing the recording um, in our follow-up communication to all of you. So please do not worry if you miss a segment of this uh, session because we will be able to share this with you afterwards. So we wanted to actually begin tonight with a quick poll because we have so many people joining us tonight. And we just wanted to see where everyone is located um, as you're joining today. We have posted a link in the chat uh, for a quick poll. So if you click the chat and um, would like to participate in our poll, I can tell you that the poll is anonymous. So just click on the link and tell us the country and also the location where you currently are. And we will show on our screen where everyone is located. That's amazing. I think Boston is still winning. So many of you are enjoying our first snow in Boston today. We have people from Toronto. We have people. Wow. That's amazing. And it keeps coming. Wonderful. I think, as, as you can see, there are people from all over the country and, and some people from uh, across the world as well. So welcome. Let me share my screen because I would like very quickly to go over the schedule of events tonight. So we will spend the first half of this evening um, giving you a general overview of Boston University and of BU Willock. We will also talk about general application, the process, and the scholarship support that is available to you as a graduate student at BU Willock. We have included a short presentation by current students at Willock who will share their experience of what it means to be a student at Willock, why they chose to pursue their graduate studies with us, and also how they engaged with their area of academic focus, with their courses, but also with university, the university life outside of the classroom. Afterwards, we will, um, after a short break, you will have, of course, the opportunity to join individual program sessions with our faculty 
and learn more about the program or uh, area of study you're interested in pursuing with us. So without further ado, I, act, I wanted to um, introduce tonight our Dean, Dr. David Chart, who is with us tonight to welcome you to our open house and to also share um, more about our college and the exciting developments that are happening at BU Willock. So Dean Chart. Thank you, Mariana, and welcome everyone. Um, it's really exciting to have you join us for this graduate information session. First, let me say we at BU Wheelock hope that you are safe and healthy and taking measures to stay that way while we are making our way through this pandemic. Um, so we want to keep that in our uh, forefront in our minds. Let me also begin by saying a few words about our college, um, Boston University Wheelock College of Education and Human Development. We're a college that is only a few years old and was formed from a merger of two venerable education institutions in Boston. Today, we are a college of education with more than 55,000 alumni around the world and a team of faculty and staff who uh, prepare professionals in a wide variety of fields in education and human development. I'm sure you've got your eye on one of our programs, otherwise you probably wouldn't be here. But be sure to look across our programs. You may find possibilities that you were not even aware of. As a college, we have a wonderful history and a legacy of which we are very proud. But what's more important is the future and your future as a professional. We as a college are dedicating ourselves to transforming systems where people live, learn and grow so that uh, we can have a more equitable and just city and world. And we are located in a very unique city. Um, those, are, those of you who are from Boston know this, but if you're not, we're at the birthplace of public education in the United States. And many of the pioneering things that happen in mental health and healthcare in the US also happened in Boston. And so it's a great place to practice uh, and to, to grow as a, as a graduate student. If you are a person who wants to develop yourself professionally in order to lead change, to transform systems, and to make a significant and positive difference in the lives of others through education and human development professions, we believe BU Wheelock is for you. So let me again welcome you to this evening. I know you'll find the session very uh, um, informative and we're really thrilled that you're with us. Ariana? Thank you so much, Dean Chart. As college, we share Boston University's deep commitment to social justice. At B. Willock, we are proud to have one of the oldest standing committees on equity, diversity, and inclusion that is open to our faculty, staff, and students at B. Willock. Two years ago, we uh, appointed Dr. Rul Fernandez as our inaugural associate dean for equity, diversity, and inclusion. I invited Dr. Fernandez to join us tonight and to say a few words about his important work at Willock and also at Boston University. You must also know that Dr. Fernandez is a double terrier and has his bachelor's degree from Boston University and completed his doctoral studies at BU Willock. So Dr. Fernandez also teaches in our higher education administration program. So Raul, the floor is yours. Maria, thanks so much. And it was great to hear um, David, our Dean, um, lead the way as well. Um, as Mariana mentioned, I'm Dr. Raul Fernandez, um, BU Wheelock's Associate Dean for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. I am also a full-time faculty member in our higher ed administration program. I'll be seeing some of you all later tonight. Uh, it's actually situated within our Educational Leadership and Policy Studies Department. Um, I've actually, yeah, I've been affiliated with BU for 25 years, uh, first arriving as an undergrad in 95 and becoming the first in my family to graduate college in 2000. Uh, then later returning um, to work in student affairs, completing my doctorate here, and joining the faculty four years ago. You know, I'm really proud to be part of this community at BU Wheelock, which is focused on equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and also deeply committed to social justice. You see it all, and but mostly importantly, uh, you see it in the teaching, research, and community engagement that so many of our faculty are nationally known for, as well as the 
and support and development provided by our staff. Um, you know, of course, before I go and I have to recognize that we find ourselves in unusual times right now in the midst of a pandemic and a renewed urgency to address racism, all while preparing for one of the most consequential elections in history, 2020 has been quite the year. Um, but here's the good news. Uh, while all of this is happening, I can't imagine a better place to study than right here at Boston University. Uh, we've got an amazing tradition of social justice advocacy to be sure, but what isn't about our past, it's about what we're doing right now in this moment. Uh, you may have heard that Dr. Eva Max Kendi recently joined our faculty and launched BU Center for Anti-Racist Research, or that we just this week launched what will be the nation's premier center for first generation students, or that we'll soon be launching a new center ETQIA students, faculty, and staff. While others are putting out rhetoric to meet this moment, we're putting out resources. We're doing what great universities should do. We're gathering our best minds, engaging with local communities, and charting a path forward together. And we want you to be a part of that. A uh, quick story before I go, you know, I was, I was actually helping a friend move recently. It was just the two of us at first and things were moving pretty slowly. But then some other friends showed up and I noticed that we really started moving. Um, now, not everybody can lift that heavy stuff, the bed frame, the dressers, the couch, and, but everybody could grab a chair. And, and, okay. um, so let me tell you that moving van started filling up pretty quickly. And before we knew it, we're all done. We got to have some pizza. Uh, now, I'm not saying that all the challenges that we're facing as a community and as a world will be faced um, as solved as quickly as moving a two-bedroom apartment, not by a long shot. Um, but I also know it's going to take us a heck of a lot longer if folks are sitting on the porch already eating pizza while the rest of us are still loading up the truck. So, you know, as part of this session, what I, what I want to leave you with is twofold. First, we all have work to do, and that work starts with ourselves. It starts with recognizing our blind spots, educating ourselves by reading, watching, and listening to everything we can get our hands on, and by putting ourselves in positions where we can learn even more than we teach. Some of the kind of, kinds of things you can do right here at BU Wheelock. And I'm here, we're all here to help you do that. Second, all of us have something to contribute. Our faculty, the dean, and me, we all know that. You're an extraordinary talent, no doubt. Our hope is that you'll use those talents here, not in service to yourself, but in service to the community. So I'm really excited. We're all really excited to see what you can contribute because the stakes are high and there is much work to be done. So really happy to see you. Looking forward to talking more with you. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of the open house. Thank you so much, Raul. And again, thank you so much, Dean Chart. I couldn't have said this better. Um, and as Raul said, we really, really uh, put our resources and into so many initiatives in equity, diversity, and inclusion into constantly learning and doing a better work um, and not just a rhetoric. So let me, I will share my screen again because I would want to, um, tell you a bit more about Boston University and about Bill Willock. So Boston University is one of the largest private comprehensive research universities in the greater Boston area. Of course, it is situated at the heart of Boston. And as Dean Chart already said, Boston is the birth birthplace of public education in the United States. Bill boasts three campuses. 17 schools and colleges, and over 33,000 undergraduate and graduate students, and over 10,000 faculty and staff. In fact, it was one of the third largest um, employers in, in, in the Boston area. Approximately 50% of the students at Boston University are graduate students. And in addition, Boston University is a truly global community, having students from all of our 50 states and 130 countries. As a graduate student at Boston University, be in person or online or currently in our Learn From Anywhere format, you have access to a wealth of resources through our libraries, through the Center for Career Development, where you receive comprehensive career services support. Also through the Student Health Services, the Office of Disability Services. And if you're an international student, you will be working closely with our international students and scholars office to help with your uh, visa application. And of course, in addition, BU has a myriad of 
centers and activities. So if you want, you can attend events at the Howard Thurman Center for Common Ground or go see a performance at the Willow Family Theater that is actually now offering virtual programming during the pandemic. And as Ru said, very soon, you will be able to also engage with the newly founded Center on Anti-Racist Research led by Dr. Ibram Kendi, who just joined BU this summer. So BU Willock, Dean Chart already gave you a glimpse of what BU Willock is, but it's one of the newest member of the BU family. It was established in the summer of 2018 as a result of the merger uh, between uh, the Boston University School of Education and Willock College. It is the first college at BU named after a woman. And I must say that we proudly carry the name of Lucy Willock, an early childhood educator and a staunch advocate for the rights of children and immigrant families. If you decide to join our community, as David Chart also already said, you will be joining during an exciting time for our college. As a college, we are celebrating the legacies of two great institutions, and we're also charting a new course that is fueled by our desire to carry on Lucy's legacy and to make and to continue to make a positive impact in the world and make a difference in the lives of children, families, and the communities we engaged with. At Bill Willock, we really put education and human development at the center of our work. Last winter, our community came together to chart our course by developing a new guide star that provides a unifying focus of our work going forward. And you can see our guide star on this slide. I must say that the guide star is a representation of our beliefs in the power of education as the ultimate tool, the great equalizer that empowers individuals and communities and also gives our students the tools, the knowledge, and most importantly, the conviction to take on a journey to dismantle systems and long held beliefs based on inequality and divisiveness. I think many of you will agree with me tonight that the world in which we live and do our important work today really needs us to do it differently. This is the moment we pivot and put our energy into things that matter. And that's what we decided to do at Be a Willock. And that's what led to the development of our guide star. And our guide star is really also leading our strategic planning effort that again, charts the direction and the objectives of the college going forward. We believe that our academic programs and the research of our faculty and students generate critical knowledge and ideas to again, tackle some of society's most intractable challenges as they all converge in a schoolhouse, in a hospital room, or in the communities we work with and live in. As part of our strategic planning, we also adopted a core value statement that you see on this slide. And that again represents what, our, what we believe our core values are as a community. And they will define how we will conduct our work going forward. So what to expect at BU Willock? When you join BU Willock, you join a community of scholars, researchers, and practitioners. I also say you join a community of dreamers. At BU Willock, you will find amazing faculty with interest across 
varied areas of education and human development. Our faculty teach, they engage in key research, they also are with our communities. They also serve as your advisors and as your mentors. And faculty bring their expertise and practical insights into the classroom. And that is the aspect I really like about BU Willock, that as a graduate student, you actually will hear not only about theoretical concepts, but also real life experience and practical insights that our faculty will bring to the classroom, which will enrich your understanding on the matters of discussion. With 13 centers, institutes and labs, there is always an opportunity for students to engage in groundbreaking research. Here are some of the many examples of two of our doctoral students and Glenn Research Fellows who are engaged in research, who, who have received a grant, Christabel Stark had received a grant from the American Educational Research Association to study the effects of COVID-19 on pre-service teachers. And Caitlin Cooper Snyder um, was recognized by the American uh, Association, um, by the Council for Exceptional Children at their annual conference with two awards for her work on sexuality education for students with disability. Again, these are only two examples of the key research our students are engaged with. Let me pause here for a second, and I would like to introduce um, one of our faculty who is here with us tonight, Professor Eli Tucker Raymond, who will present very briefly the work of one of our centers, um, the Earl Center for Learning and Innovation. I hope that Eli is with us tonight, mm -hmm. yes? Yep. Thank you, Mariana. Um, so I'm a research associate professor, and I'd like to briefly introduce the center I'm involved with, the Earl Center for Learning and Innovation. The first thing I'm going to say is that if you want to find out more about us after you hear me talk, please note the website address on the screen because we just redid the site and just put it back up and it's not yet searchable online. Our mission at the Earl Center is to create a collaborative space for social dreaming and radical hope a space where youth and adults, learners and teachers, researchers and designers join together in expansive inquiry to develop educational experiences animated by commitments to creativity, dignity and justice. We have both community engagement and research projects at the center. For example, um, one of our community engagement projects is Young Men Organizing for Change. It's an interdisciplinary school-based mentorship program aimed at supporting black, indigenous and young men of color along their journey in high school. YMOC focuses on the holistic development of students by recognizing the fullness of their humanity, empowering their agency, and fostering leadership development by engaging them in participatory action research about topics important to them. One of our research projects is STEM Cascades, which asks how young people, particularly youth from communities of color, develop identities as teachers and as STEM doers and knowers, as well as what they learn about teaching in STEM when they act as near peer mentors or facilitators of learning for others. But we have a lot more projects um, and many opportunities at the center, including some paid ones for graduate students to work uh, with us. Um, if you'd like to know more, please check out our website for more descriptions. There's a contact form on our site or feel free to email any of us up here on the slide. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eli, for joining us tonight. So I also wanted to tell you that one when you join B. Willock, you also join a truly global community of more than 58,000 alumni across the country and across the world. And they are all making their mark in the world and they are making a difference in the lives of children, families, and communities. This slide represents some of our alumni who were recognized this year for their contributions to our community and the world at large. And of course, as a graduate student at Willock, you receive 
a, a comprehensive uh, support and have access to a wealth of resources through our Office of Student Services. And you will have a dedicated faculty advisor. You will also have um, professional advisors and uh, you will have a financial aid support as a prospective and also a current student at, at Waylock. In addition, I wanted to mention two of our offices uh, at Waylock, the Office of Professional Preparation, which will guide you as you complete licensure or field placement requirements as part of your degree, and also the Office of Student Records. We have our the director of our Office of Professional Preparation, Ryan Lovell, with us tonight. And Ryan will be happy to answer any questions related to licensure or field placements. And my last point about the wealth of resources available to our graduate students is again, the access you gain to our um, to the Boston University Center of, for Career Development, which provide a comprehensive career services support from resume and interview assistance to on-campus on career fairs, monthly career newsletters, and an amazing tool I love to use, Handshake, which really helps you with your career pursuits. Let me pause now and um, see if there are any questions at this point of the presentation. I think my colleagues are answering the questions. So I will go ahead and um, I will introduce my colleague, Ellen Fazuski, who is our Associate Dean for Student Affairs. Ellen is also a clinical professor um, of science education. And Ellen will introduce the four current students who are with us tonight to share their experience. Ellen. Thank you so much, Mariana, and good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. In this section of this evening's program, we have the wonderful opportunity to hear from some of our current graduate students as they share their perspectives on being a student at BU Wheelock. I will ask each of them to introduce themselves and state the name of the program that they are in. Then I will ask each of them a specific question. Although we will not have time right now for a Q&A period immediately after this panel, these students, along with other students, will be in the individual program sessions later in the evening. So if I could have um, you, Sean, please introduce yourself. And again, please state the program that you are in. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so my name is Yushan Huang and I am a student in the Educational Leadership and Policy Studies program concentrating in higher education administration. Um, this is a one year program and it's my first semester in, in the program. And I am also a member of the Graduate Student Engagement Network. Um, I'm serving as the EDI representative and I'm also a member of the Career and Professional Development Committee. Um, and also I'm doing my graduate assistantship at the Associate's Office of Faculty Affairs and Research. And really, uh, when I was applying to graduate schools, uh, Wheelock really stood out with its professional attitudes and marketing efforts. And throughout my interactions uh, with the school, I just felt really welcomed. And uh, I think the key reason that I chose, uh, that I commit to BU was that, um, I think, especially now, um, in a time where many schools are trying to improve equity, diversity, and inclusion, the UWELOG actually have staffs and a faculty of color that really reflect um, this effort. And compared to other programs and schools that I was applying to at the time, I found BU to be more authentic and sincere in the commu uh, commitment to EDI, uh, which is so re relevant and important in education. And um, I would say many of my classmates also share this feeling. Um, I am now over um, half a semester into this program and I'm very happy with my decision. Uh, and all of my classes 
Um, they discuss very relevant issues. Um, they definitely apply theories into practice and you have so many engaging discussions with peers from all over the world. And I would say it's definitely a very diverse cohort. Yushan, thank you so much for sharing that about why you chose BU Wheelock. And as you mentioned, as a, a fellow member of yours on the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, it's been great having you as a representative of our graduate student population. So thank you so much for being here tonight as well as uh, joining in those um, efforts. So I'm going to ask the uh, Yenepsi to talk and to introduce yourself as well as uh, talk a little bit about how your faculty have helped you advance you in your academic and professional goals. Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Salvarado. I am part of the um, Leadership and Policy Studies Master's program. Um, I really enjoy doing this program because I get to work, I still get to work full time as a teacher for Boston Public Schools. Um, this program has allowed me to to work on projects that are relatable to, to issues that many of our districts are encountering. And not only to work on districts that we are familiar, we, we can get out of that box as well. And so I think faculty has helped me out in the sense of branching out and thinking about projects that could actually be beneficial and also connecting me with superintendents around the area. So I've been working on a project about um, a district close to within the Boston area. And so my professor was like, Janepsi, you can improve on that if you get in contact with the superintendent. I was like, there is no way. But he made it happen in three days. So I got to speak with the superintendent. And of course, my project was amazing by having this opportunity. So I think BU has a strong connection within our districts around the area and also outside of the Boston area. And I think that's the beauty of our program and our professors challenge us to work on projects that are relatable um, on top of doing research and getting to know people within our community. And I think I really enjoy that because I got to speak with the superintendent and she asked me, why, why do you pick my district? And I told her, I want to be the first Central American to be a, an assistant principal in your district. She was like, wow, keep me updated. Like building those connections. I think that's the beauty of our program. NBU is recognized not only in our area, but also in other states and international. So it brings that beauty into uh, our work to be recognized as well. Thank you so much, Janepsi, talking a little bit about your experiences now with the faculty as well as uh, working with some of the schools in the local area. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, our next uh, panel panelist is going to be Ali. So Ali, if you could introduce yourself and just talk a little bit about how your experience at BU has prepared you in a unique or particular way for your career. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name is Ali Sharon and I am in my final semester in the master's program of child life and family centered care here at WeWalk. So I want to talk a little bit about our academic program as well as some of the other resources and what makes BU WeWalk so particularly amazing for getting you set up for a career as a certified child life specialist. Um, so for our academic program, we get to learn from professionals that have experience in the field, which is so valuable with their insight and their wisdom in the field specifically. We also have countless resources and supports, not just as a student, but also as a person, which I find to be really, really incredible. And earlier in the presentation, they definitely highlighted some of those resources. And then what I really think makes the youth program really special and setting you up to be a certified child life specialist on top of the coursework is um, their focus on preparing you as a professional. So in this program, it really helps you set up for your clinical experience. It helps you with your um, resume building, with your practice, with internships and interviewing skills and techniques, which really helps you as a professional in general and not just as a child life specialist. And then also for BU's program, what really makes them take it a step further is they provide us with opportunities to apply everything that we've learned in the classroom to working with patients and families firsthand. And in our field, we really rely heavily on the evidence-based practice and this graduate program enables us to do just that. So with, the, um, with our school, we work so closely with incredible healthcare programs and prestigious clinical settings in the Boston area, which is where we are placed in a variety of settings, whether it be traditional or non-traditional. And we are supervised by certified child life specialists to guide us in developing our own personal skills and practice to help us create a solid foundation 
direction um, for our future careers in child life. So we're, uh, we're, this enables us to really work on supporting, advocating, and empowering these vulnerable populations um, through this internship experience. And on top of that, by the end of the program, which is where I am, uh, this program sets you up to sit for the certification exam, which I think is super important. And after finishing your coursework and your internship, you have everything you need to succeed in the field of child life, which in my opinion, uh, makes this graduate program super special and unique in preparing you for a career in child life. Thank you so much, Allie. Um, that's wonderful to hear about your experiences in the child life and family centered um, care program. Okay, so last but not least, I'd like to ask our fourth student who's with us tonight, uh, Valentina, if you could introduce yourself. And then I'm going to ask you a question about experiences outside of the classroom. So what field-based or research experience has been a highlight for you? Hi, everyone. Hi, Ellen. Thank you for having me here. I am a second year uh, student in the counseling program. My track is school counseling. There are three tracks in the counseling program. One of them is school counseling. Um, and as I said, I'm in my second year and my most amazing fieldwork experiences were this past two semesters. Um, you start doing your internship slash practicum in my program uh, in the second semester of your first year. And you have to be in a placement in my um, in my position, it's a school, of course. I am in, in Somerville High School. You have the possibility of choosing whatever school you want in whatever district you feel most comfortable and whatever population you want to work with. So I think the liberty that they give you as long as you have a supervisor with the credentials needed um, is really important. I wanted to work with Latino students, so I picked a district with, uh, with, that has 50% of Latino students, so that's really important for me. It was and it is a great experience. Uh, you have so many hours to fulfill. Right now I'm doing three full days of my internship, which is really demanding, but it's really good if you want to immerse yourself in what your job is going to look like once you graduate. Um, and I also had the possibility of connecting with a lot of other faculty uh, that are doing currently research and we keep in contact all the time. I have worked with um, Dr. Saltberg, for example, he, uh, he does research uh, with Latinx students as well. And we have talked about uh, future possibilities of on the research area. So I think BU Wheelock is a great place. You have a lot of possibilities of connecting with faculty and picking different internships and placements. And it's very accommodating to whatever your needs and what your future plans are. I also have the chance of being the sec a second year graduate assistant in student service CIST, which is awesome if you have the possibility of working at BU. Um, it is amazing. I got so many good skills and experiences from working there. Um, I am very lucky that working at Student Services is heavily connected to what I want to do in my future as a school counselor. So I have worked with students one-on-one -on -one and I have done events with all the people at Student Services, which has been very, very good and all things that I'm going to put in my toolbox for, for my future profession. So I'm really grateful for all those three areas. And if you have the possibility of immersing yourself in the community and in BU while also doing field work outside of BU, it is the most, you can take the most out of it. Thank you so much, Valentine, And it's a pleasure to have you working with us as part of Student Services. So thank you so much for that, for being our grad assistant. So we, we, we appreciate that. Um, so I'd like to thank Valentine as well as all the students on our student panel. And again, unfortunately, we don't have time right now for individual questions, but I highly encourage you to attend your individual program sessions because we've got so many great students, such as the four that we're seeing here tonight, as well as many others that will be in those program sessions. So thank you very much. And I'd like to turn it back over to Mariana. Thank you so much, Ellen, and thank you, Valentina, and uh, Yushin, and Janapsi, and Ali for, for this wonderful, wonderful insights into your life and uh, as a graduate student at BU Willock. So let me transition now to um, our, uh, to give you a bit more detail about the admissions process, about the general application process, tuition, and also scholarship uh, assistance and financial aid available at BU Willock. 
At this point, I would like to invite my colleague, Jasmine Samuels, who is our Assistant Director of Financial Aid. So Jasmine will be uh, the one to take you um, through this uh, second part of our presentation. Jasmine? Hello everyone, how are you? And um, thank you for coming and spending this, this Friday evening with us. So I just wanna take you through um, a few things regarding preparing for your application and things like that. So regarding the application, you would include the following items. You would include a resume or a CV that provides additional details about your career, volunteer experience, organizational experience as it relates to your professional and personal development. You would also include a statement of qualification and objectives. Essentially, this piece explains your interest in your program of choice. Additionally, all applicants will be required to turn in an equity and inclusion statement. So at Wheelock College, we are a community that we are actively committed to social justice and ensuring that learning is an equitable experience for all. So we utilize this essay as an opportunity to ensure that we're also appealing to candidates um, who value these same ideals. Um, and for our doctoral students, I saw a couple questions in the Q&A um, feature. So I do hope that I answered this for those that had that question. You'll need to submit a sample of your analytical writing in order for faculty to make a more informed yeah, an informed evaluation of your academic fit of the program. Um, and you'll also have the option to include, it's essentially a, an optional essay, basically. So um, it gives you the opportunity to provide context to things that we otherwise wouldn't know. So for example, if you had a rough semester in undergrad or in graduate, um, school that was reflected on your transcripts and you just wanted to give us the opportunity to learn the reason as to why, take this as that opportunity. Um, again, I'd like to stress that it is optional. It's definitely not required. You'll also need to submit unofficial transcripts with your admissions application. Please note that if you are accepted into the university that you will be required to submit official transcripts at a later date. Um, so that way you can finalize all of the documentation associated with your admittance and your admissions application. If required by your program, you will need to provide English proficiency scores. And I saw a couple of questions in the chat box um, unique to standardized test scores. Uh, for those who have questions about your GRE or the MAT, standardized test scores are being waived completely for the 2021-22 academic year. And lastly, there is the non-refundable $95 application fee. And so you would upload these materials for review. And if you did have any questions about your application, any items that would be missing, I talk with my hands, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm noticing that in the camera. Um, we actively encourage you all to reach out to us if you do have any questions at all. Um, the time that it takes faculty to review your application is three to four weeks. So it's done from a holistic perspective that takes into account your academic ability, determining your fit for the program, as well as your professional promise. Um, all decisions surrounding your application will be sent via email. And we have noticed for some reason that if you are utilizing an edu or .org email address that you won't receive emails from us. I think that is associated with institutional firewall. So as a recommendation, when you do submit your admissions application, we are gonna recommend that you use a Gmail or a Yahoo or Hotmail account, just so that way, um, we hear from you and vice versa. So I do want to transition into application deadlines. So for applicants who are submitting admissions materials for spring 21, the final date to have all application materials, including um, the application fee would be December 15, 2021. So um, the doctoral deadline is December 10th, 2020 for all fall 21 applicants. 
the recommended deadline for fall 21 is January 13th, 2021. And so I saw a question in the Q&A chat as well. So I'm hope I'm able to answer this question. The deadline is full stop for all child life applicants of January 13th, 2021, if you had that question. Um, the dates for spring 21, that semester begins on January 25th, 2021. And fall 21, that semester begins on September 2nd, 2021. Um, and what I do want you to know is that there are some programs that do allow for students to begin coursework in the summer that precedes the semester that you'll be starting for fall. So for those who are interested to know the date that summer 21 begins, that is May 24th, 2021. And it will depend on your program as to whether you have the option to begin coursework in the summer. So I wanna transition into talking about tuition fees and rates and all of that good stuff. So currently tuition and fees for the 2021 well, 2020-21 academic year is $57,686. So tuition per semester as a full-time student is $28,427. Fees per semester as a full-time student is $416. For students who are attempting day coursework, which are courses offered before 3.30 p.m., the cost per credit hour is $1,770. For online and evening coursework, and by evening I mean courses offered after 3.30 p.m., um, the cost is $888 per credit hour, and the fees are $70 per semester. Um, and that's for part-time students, just in case I didn't clarify that. So what I want to note is that if you are attempting 12 credit hours or more, you will be considered a full-time student, and you will be charged the aforementioned standard tuition and fees that I mentioned. So also on this slide, I've included information about tuition and fee rates with regards to this past summer. If you notice the cost per credit hour during the summer is less than the cost per credit hour during the academic year. What I also want to inform you is that all students are considered part-time during the summer, no matter the amount of credit hours it is that you attempt. So for example, you could be attempting one to 12 credit hours during the summer and still be considered um, part-time. So just in case, starting during the summer was of interest for you, I think that is of note um, and we're taking advantage of. Um, and lastly, what I want to also uh, make sure that I, I stress to everyone is that typically tuition does increase every academic year. Um, the Board of Trustees, they normally release this information every March for the upcoming academic year. Um, and that rate historically has been 3.5 to 4%. Um, just as a, a disclaimer for that. So um, I next want to transition into talking about uh, funding your degree. So all students who submit an admissions application by the recommended deadline of January 13th, 2021 will automatically be considered for graduate scholars awards. Additionally, students will have the opportunity um, to submit a supplemental scholarship application to be considered for name and endowed funding. Um, what I do want to note as a disclaimer, as you always have to do with when you're talking about scholarship funds, I do want all in attendance to be aware that funding is limited. Um, there are also options to pursue federal and private loans. Typically, repayment of these loans, they don't begin until six months after graduation. Some loan lenders may have enrollment and satisfactory academic progress app requirements that their applicants must adhere to. So just a, a thing to note. Um, and Boston University also gives students the opportunity to be placed on an interest-free payment plan. Um, enrollment within that payment plan is managed by my colleagues in Student Accountant Services. So for additional details, I do recommend contacting them via email um, at studentaid at bu.edu. And next, I do want to transition into a breakdown of our name and endowed awards. Oh, I lied. 
My bad, y'all. So with regards to Graduate Scholars Awards, um, again, just as a reminder, um, you'll automatically be considered for the Graduate Scholars Award if you submit your application by January 13, 2021. The amounts do vary. Um, with regards to the Name and Endowed Awards, um, when you submit the supplemental scholarship application and you complete the, quest the questionnaire to the entirety that you feel comfortable, we'll be able to make a, a decision as to what funds that you qualify for and you will be notified via email. So now I want to transition into the breakdown of our Name and Endowed Awards. So we have the Anson and a Cultural Fund, which was established in 1977 at former School of Education by Dr. Harold Anson in honor of his wife, Evelyn Anson. Both were alumni of BU from the 1930s. So Mrs. Anson, she selected her alma mater for this fund, which she carefully uh, designed for future generations of educators who share her vision. The purpose of this fund is to help educators increase cross-cultural understanding of cultural, ethnic, and or religious groups in pre-K, um, grade 12 adult education settings, US or internationally. And then we have uh, the Coleman uh, Fund, which was established in 2008 by William Coleman in honor of his wife, Levita Coleman, a graduate of Boston University's former School of Education, now ELOC. So Mrs. Coleman selected her alma mater for this fund and thoughtfully designed this award for future generations of educators who share her belief that education is the core of a democratic and just society and that a well-trained teacher is the core of a quality education. And so we also have the Ruth Batson Award. So this is a, an award that uh, launched officially this fall, 2020. So the Ruth Batson Equity and Impact Scholarship Award is a program that's available to students who identify as Black, Latinx, or Hispanic. So this new scholarship fund, it was named in honor of Ms. Batson, an educator and a civil rights advocate who through leadership and roles with the NAACP and the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination helped to push the city of Boston towards the desegregation of its public schools. She earned her master's of education from Boston University in 1976. Um, and this is a fund source that is available to all um, applicants who are interested in master's or CAGS degrees. And then we have the Diversity Fund. So this is awarded to students from underrepresented backgrounds that will increase diversity within our community at Wheelock. Those backgrounds may include, but definitely are not limited to religious background, ethnic, cultural, race, sexual orientation, first generational college student status, socioeconomic status and different life experiences that you may bring that would be of value to our community. So I am going to wrap it up um, right now and transition it back to my colleague Mariana for us to get you transitioned into your breakout program sessions. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I think you covered this beautifully. And again, I see a lot of questions in the chat and we may still, since we are running out of time, we may not be able to get to all of your questions at this very moment. However, uh, we will be able to, if, if you have put your name in, in the Q&A, we will be able to answer those questions. Later, um, we will, like we email you, or again, you are uh, always welcome to uh, email us directly. Here you see our, um, uh, the best contact information to reach us, I would say would be our WeGrad. Uh, email address, which is w-h-e-g-r-a-d at bu.edu, and we will make sure that we respond to your questions right away. Um, so, I think we are running out of time. Um, so, um, here uh, is the link to um, our um, program breakouts, you were sent this link 
via uh, email in your confirmation email you should have received the link that contains all the URLs to the individual sessions. Uh, so you can choose uh, which program of interest uh, you attend tonight. Um, and uh, if you click on the link, you will also get the drop down menu of all the sessions that are currently being offered tonight. I must, uh, I, I just received a note that one of the links for our uh, PhD in counseling psychology and applied and the PhD in applied human development program for that session, uh, that link was incorrect. So if you're planning on coming to, on attending the uh, PhD in counseling psychology and applied human development session, please check the chat because we just posted the new link in the chat. Uh, so you have the correct link to attend that session. Uh, if you are looking for information about our EDD in educational leadership and policy studies, pre-K 12, you can attend the educational leadership and policy studies pre-K 12 session. All other doctoral studies candidates, please consider going to the PhD in educational studies session um, for your breakout session. And um, also, if you're interested in graduate studies in curriculum and teaching, please consider attending um, a session where um, your content interest lies. So for example, if you're interested in curriculum and teaching in math education, consider going to the math education um, session or to the science education or English education ses sessions if those are the areas of academic interest you are interested in. Um, a member of our team will stay here in this session to make sure we guide you if in case you have questions about which individual session to attend um, you have to leave this general session and then again click on the url link that was sent to you and join the session of your choosing um, i think with that again i would like to thank all of you for coming tonight uh, and for your interest in Bio Willock, we are here to answer your questions. Please reach out to us after this session, and we would love to see you uh, at Bio Willock next fall or spring or in any future semester. Thank you.